Coming up on today's show, Tesla announces the name of its pickup truck ahead of next week's live reveal, details of the Ford Mustang Mark E get leaked online, and electric vehicles outsell stick shift manual transmissions in the US for the first time in history. These stories and more coming next. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of cleaner, greener, safer and smarter transport. I'm making a whistle stop visit to the studio to record this a day earlier than usual after spending part of the week doing this. This car is breaking the laws of physics. It is just crazy. So if we've missed a breaking news story from Friday, you'll know why. Today's show is sponsored by the fourth annual Climate Exchange Carbon Raffle. Buy a raffle ticket today at carbonraffle.org for the chance to win a brand new Tesla of your choice of up to 195,000 US dollars total value, taxes included. Stick around until the end of the show and I'll tell you how to enter. Also, thanks go to the Electric Auto Association for their usual sponsorship of today's News Roundup show. Find out how you can accelerate the electrification of transportation today by going to electricauto.org. And finally, a shout out to our buddies over at Fully Charged Live USA. Come see us at Fully Charged Live this February in Texas and find out how you can get discounts off your tickets at the end of this show. It's official, Tesla has begun sending out stylized invites to its Tesla pickup reveal event next week, and in doing so, has finally revealed the name of this long-awaited vehicle. Musk has already hinted that the Cybertruck, yes, that's its name, spelled C-Y-B-R-T-R-K, will look like an armored personnel carrier from the future. And the stylized trademark submitted this week to the Trademark and Patent Office certainly follows in that line. We've got less than a week to wait, though, so we'll know soon enough how this Tesla is really going to look. With production of its ID3 now underway at Zweikau, which I incorrectly identified as being in Lower Saxony last week, Sorry, it's in Saxony, not Lower Saxony. Volkswagen is finding some new and interesting ways to educate customers about its new car. One of them showcasing how the compact and light 150 kilowatt motor of the ID3 really is by putting one in a gym bag. I'm sure many of you already know how much power an electric motor can pack into a small space, but for those new to electric cars, this is certainly a new and novel way to showcase the fact. I bet you can't do that with a V8. We've known for some time that Tesla was on the hunt for a site for its next Gigafactory, and that location has going to be in Europe. But now we know exactly where in Europe, Berlin. Announced midweek by Elon Musk using his favorite method, Twitter, the Gigafactory Berlin will be charged with producing batteries, powertrains and vehicles, with the Tesla Model Y being the first car to roll off the production line when the Gigafactory is built in Berlin. Why Berlin? Well, Germany is known for its engineering prowess and apparently Brexit caused Tesla to give a wide berth to the UK, which at one point was in the running. Ford has officially confirmed that its Mustang-inspired EV, a vehicle due to get its official reveal in LA on November 17th, will be called the Ford Mustang Mark E. The pre-order page for the same was leaked online Thursday and suggests Ford will begin sales from $44,000 pre-incentives in the US. Customers will be able to put down a $500 or equivalent refundable deposit using the Mustang site from Sunday, as soon as the reveal event has finished. Having seen the car myself in the metal, all I can say is, well, um, I can't actually say anything as I'm under embargo until Sunday, but you should totally tune into the reveal. Last year, the Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model S lost their Consumer Reports recommended list placement after enough owners in the organization's annual auto reliability survey gave both cars poor ratings. But this year's annual auto reliability survey highlights the hard work that Tesla has been putting into rectifying those problems. And now both cars are back in the recommended list. However, Model X is still marked as one of the least reliable cars in the survey. And that's unfortunately dragging Tesla down in terms of overall brand reliability. 
Volkswagen has officially broken ground at a brand new expansion to its Chattanooga, Tennessee production facility. This time, it's going to be dedicated exclusively to electric vehicle production. $800 million is being invested in the Chattanooga plant, which will begin producing the Volkswagen ID4 SUV in 2022. Volkswagen says it also plans to build a brand new battery production facility alongside its existing Chattanooga plant in order to supply US-made battery packs to its US market cars. For now, electric vehicles will be made in Tennessee alongside the Atlas SUV and Passat sedan but eventually the factory will become all electric. The 2019 Brown to Green Report, an extensive examination of how the G20 nations are doing when it comes to climate action, has just been published. This year's report is pretty stark, however, and shows that G20 nations are not doing anywhere near enough to meet the Paris Climate Accord goals. Canada, France, Japan and the UK were highlighted as doing the most to ban fossil fueled cars. But the report says that we need to collectively ban new fossil fuel sales by 2035 or it's all over. The US came top in one thing, though, the highest transportation emissions per capita. It turns out it's 24 times that of India. Last week, I told you about the range increase given to the 2020 Hyundai Ioniq EV. And this week, as a consequence of that range boost, Hyundai is offering some pretty crazy deals on the shorter range, outgoing 2019 model year cars. Some US dealers are now offering 2019 Ioniq EVs on $109 per month lease deals, with $2,500 due at signing for 10,000 miles per year, for three years. But in other parts of the US, that deal is even crazier, coming in at $79 per month when you've added in local incentives. It may not be the longest range car out there, but at that rate, it's a cracking lease deal. The European Investment Bank might not be the first thing you think of when discussing cleaner, greener transportation. But this week, it made a massive move on promoting just that in a roundabout kind of way. How? By announcing that it will stop funding oil, gas and coal projects by the end of 2021. Its new ban on investing in fossil fuel projects is a year later than some member states had hoped it would be. But if you tie this in with all the other fossil fuel news from recent weeks, I think you can see that the tide is most certainly running out on fossil fuels. And now it's time for short shorts. Come December 3rd, California will no longer provide clean vehicle rebates for cars costing more than 60,000 US dollars or plug-in hybrids with less than 35 miles of EV-only range. It's part of a new policy that the Air Resource Board is bringing in to prioritize affordable electric car ownership. The Morris J-Type commercial van has now officially been reborn as the Morris Commercial JE. E meaning electric. It's a retro-themed British commercial vehicle that hits all of the right buttons, but it's expected to cost around £60,000 sterling. EV Box celebrated its 100,000th installed charging station this week. In celebration, the charging station manufacturer has announced that it's now going to plant one tree for every new charging point of its that's installed from this point onwards. After a tweak to its headlight alignment, the Chevrolet Bolt EV has been retested by the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety and consequently earned itself a top pick award from the organization. Headlight glare had previously caused the car to miss out. It didn't quite make the top pick plus. NASA showcased its first electric plane, the X-57 Maxwell, to the press for the first time this week. It took delivery back in October and hopes to develop safety and testing standards for electric air travel, as well as continue ongoing electric plane engineering development. After years of focusing on hybrid and hydrogen fuel cell technology, Honda has confirmed that it's shifting its focus towards battery electric instead and stopping diesel sales altogether. It says it hopes every car it sells in Europe by 2022 will be electrified in some way. The A-Spark Al hypercar got its production debut in Dubai this week. With a 1.69 second claimed sprint time and a top speed of 249 miles per hour, it's going on sale with a staggering $3.3 million price tag. Mm. General Motors' Chinese subsidiary has unveiled a new electric model for the Chinese market. Called the Chevrolet Menlo EV, it looks fantastic and could very easily sell in other markets around the world. But its specs aren't all that hot. For now, it's unfortunately going to be Chinese market only. 
The Chinese factory where Volkswagen will build its Chinese market ID3s alongside its Chinese market partner has just entered into the pre-production phase at its facility. The factory is less than a year old and Volkswagen says full production isn't that far off. Daimler has confirmed that it has taken a, quote, reality check on its goals for autonomous vehicles and robotic taxis, stating it's harder to build self-driving vehicles for busy cities than it once thought. Now it's going to refocus its autonomous vehicle efforts on tech for long-haul trucks. It's official. Riding an electrically assisted mountain bike is just as good for your health as riding a purely human-powered one. That's according to a new report from Utah which discovered the cardiovascular health benefits of both forms of bicycling are surprisingly similar. A Detroit forecasting firm is claiming that recent negotiations with the Union of Automotive Workers has resulted in GM agreeing to invest $3 billion in the Detroit Hamtramck facility, where the Chevrolet Volt used to be made, to build electric pickups and SUVs. One of the models includes an electric Escalade. Daimler Trucks has just announced a new service initiative to help existing commercial customers make the switch from internal combustion to electric trucks. This includes a consulting service that helps customers plan for things like charging stations and adjusting their routes so that they're optimized for EVs. A Uruguay manufacturer and distributor of Toyota vehicles has revealed a special electric and hybrid vehicle noise generator that it says has been designed to operate at just the right frequencies that are scientifically proven to help plants grow. No, I'm not kidding. And no, it's not April 1st. The Chinese Ministry of Industry has just published revised guidelines for electric car battery recycling. The guidelines are now stricter than they were and they require electric automakers to establish battery pack recycling programs as well as offer customers replacement packs for their cars when their existing ones have run out of use. The Trump Organization has lost a legal battle with the Scottish government after trying to sue it in 2012 for authorizing an offshore wind farm near a Trump-owned golf course. The Trump Organization has been ordered to pay nearly a quarter million pounds sterling in damages to the Scottish government. The Los Angeles Bureau of Street Lightning, in partnership with Flow, has just completed the installation of more than 130 lamppost charging stations for use by electric cars. It's all part of a push to make it easier for Los Angeles to own an electric car, even if they live in an apartment. The Hornsdale Power Reserve, a massive installation of Tesla power banks in southern Australia, or rather South Australia, may be about to get even bigger. As Hyperchange TV noted yesterday, massive land tracks of Tesla power packs were seen on the road near the power reserve, meaning it could be about to get even bigger. And those are your short shorts. There will be more next week. Mercedes-Benz has released its own environmental life cycle report for the Mercedes-Benz EQC electric SUV this week. In a move we'd like to see other automakers follow. It highlights that while the EQC, like any electric vehicle, can have a pretty low emission during its time on the road if it's charged using renewably generated electricity, a large part of its carbon emissions, 51% in fact, occur during the manufacturing process. Benz says it aims to reduce that impact by switching to recycled materials in its vehicles and ensuring its production facilities are carbon neutral by 2022. How can you help lower the footprint? Well, by not switching out your car every few years. And finally, automakers have been saying for years that people don't want to buy electric cars and have been using that justification not to make them. But at the same time, those very same automakers have been quite happily producing manual transmission cars without a squeak of complaint. But this week, we learned that last quarter in the United States, manual transmission sales lagged electric car sales 1.1% to 1.9%. I'll grant that manual transmission hasn't been big in the US for many, many years, save for a few key market areas and, of course, among hardened gas heads. But next time a car dealer says no one wants to buy an EV, you know what to say. And on that note, it's time to say goodbye. That's the end of this week's show, and I'm glad that you were here. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to help us make more videos like this one and the ones we've been pushing out this week, please do like, comment, and subscribe. Send us a couple of dollars our way every month through Patreon. You can visit our swag store, and if you fancy it, 
send us a coffee or support next week's LA Auto Show coverage by making a donation through Kofi. Traveling to auto shows isn't cheap and our shoestring budget does really appreciate any help you can give. LA is costing us about $2,000. Thanks to the Electric Auto Association for also sponsoring today's news roundup. Advocating and educating the world about electric vehicles since 1967, the Electric Auto Association believes that the future depends on us going electric today. You can find out how to become an EV educator yourself, discover a local monthly meetup, or just, you know, talk to real world owners about what it's like to drive an electric car by going to electricauto.org. We are all members of the EAA and we're really proud to support this fantastic and essential nonprofit. And thanks to Climate Exchange's fourth annual carbon raffle for also sponsoring today's show, focusing on research media and advocacy for smart, ambitious climate and emissions reduction policy. Climate Exchange is a fantastic nonprofit, 501c3, currently working with local leaders and stakeholders in more than 47 US states. And once again, they've partnered with us to give you a chance to win a Tesla of your dreams. It's a really fantastic prize draw and you're going to want to take part. This year, the raffle is bigger and better than ever before, with each ticket costing $250 US dollars and the prize draw set for Valentine's Day 2020. That's February 14th. First prize is a Tesla of your choice of up to $195,000, while second place will win $10,000 cash and third place $5,000 cash. Tickets are limited, so make sure you get yours today by going to carbonraffle.org or following the link right here. You'll find full terms and conditions on the site, but I should note that it is only open to US residents. I'm really sorry on that one. And as promised earlier on in the show, it's Fully Charged Live's first ever US show next year on February 1st and 2nd in Austin, Texas. So come along to Raceway of the Americas and join in the fun. If you don't watch Fully Charged, you are totally missing out. And if you haven't attended a Fully Charged Live, well, it's about time you do. I'm going to be there with the rest of the Transport Evolved crew, and we're going to be taking part in some of the on stage discussions. We've got an awesome 15% discount to share with all of you off your ticket price. So head to the link in the show notes and enter TE2019 in the discount window in order to get those tickets. You're also going to get a link there. You may have also noticed I've been out of the studio pretty much constantly for the past two weeks and I'm going to be in LA this week for the LA Auto Show from now through until Wednesday. So next week I'm going to treat myself to a little break and head to a convention that I go to every year without fail up in Seattle. And the week following that will be Thanksgiving, so you're going to have a couple of weeks without this news roundup show. But don't worry, I'm going to be giving you lots and lots of content in between. Until then, thanks for joining me and don't forget to be better, kinder and smarter with one another. Keep evolving! Yeah, I'm still here. Listen, I'm not going to be around next Thursday. I'm going to be at a convention in Seattle and I've wanted to go to that convention for a really long time. But if I get enough likes and retweets, I'll get my alter ego to sit down and do a reaction. Yeah, a giant talking British dog time traveller. Go on, you know you want it. Like, retweet or whatever. If we get 200, I'll make it happen for a good cause.